but dead in this situation. If he had known how the weapon functions and what immediate action to apply, this might not have happened. This cutaway model will be used to show you how the M16A1 rifle functions and the immediate action to remedy some common malfunctions. To load the M16A1, insert the magazine up into the magazine well until a click of the magazine catch can be heard. Seeing the same action on the cutaway, observe the magazine catch enter the square cutout of the magazine and hold the magazine up in the weapon. The magazine may be inserted with the bolt carrier to the rear or in the forward position. To demonstrate unloading the rifle, place the selector on the left side into the safe position. Press in on the magazine catch button and remove the magazine. Pull the bolt carrier to the rear and lock it by pushing in on the bolt catch. Then, visually inspect the chamber to ensure it is clear. The selector lever on the left side of the receiver has three positions. The selector, when rotated to the safe position, let's look inside. The selector, when rotated to the safe position, blocks the movement of the trigger and prevents the hammer from being released. In the semi-automatic position, one round is fired every time the trigger is squeezed. The trigger must be released and squeezed again in order to fire another round. The automatic position allows the weapon to fire automatically until the trigger is released or until the magazine is empty. When the magazine is empty, the bolt catch on the left side of the receiver holds the bolt and carrier to the rear until a loaded magazine can be placed into the weapon. Then release the bolt catch. This allows the bolt to come forward, chambering around, and the weapon is ready to fire again. The M16A1 rifle has eight steps in the cycle of functioning. These steps are feeding, chambering, locking, firing, unlocking, extraction, ejection, and cocking. Some of these steps overlap and occur simultaneously, but we will discuss each one separately. We will begin with Feeding. The magazine spring and follower push up around against the magazine lips in line with the bolt. The expansion of the action spring sends the bolt carrier group forward, which strips around from the magazine and places it in line with the chamber. Slow motion, it looks like this. Our next step is chambering. The round is pushed forward into the chamber until the shoulder of the cartridge case meets the shoulder of the chamber and forward movement of the round is stopped. At the same time, the action spring continues to push the bolt carrier group forward, and the extractor, as demonstrated, snaps over the cartridge base and into the extraction groove. 
Simultaneously, the ejector is being pushed into the face of the bolt, compressing the ejector spring. And at this point, the forward movement of the bolt is stopped and chambering is complete. The next step in the cycle of functioning is locking. The bolt carrier is driven forward one half inch after the forward travel of the bolt is stopped. The bolt cam pin moves out from the upper receiver guide channel and moves along the cam track to rotate the bolt counterclockwise. The locking lugs of the bolt align with the locking lugs of the barrel extension, locking the bolt. And the head of the cam pin is positioned into the receiver recess. The weapon is locked and ready to fire. The next step in the cycle is firing. We will discuss semi-automatic firing first. With the selector lever set into the semi position, looking at the right side of the weapon, the trigger is pulled, it rotates on the trigger pin, bringing the nose of the trigger down away from the hammer. This allows the hammer to rotate forward by the action of the hammer spring. The hammer strikes the firing pin, sending it forward into the primer of a cartridge, firing the round. After firing, unlocking takes place. Unlocking occurs when the expanding gas forces the bullet down the bore. A small portion of the gas created by the burning powder of the cartridge enters the gas tube through the gas port. Gas travels down the gas tube until it enters the bolt carrier by the bolt carrier key, which directs the gas into the area called the gas cylinder, that is, between the bolt and the bolt carrier. This causes the bolt carrier to move rearward. Remember, the bolt cannot move to the rear because it is locked in the barrel socket. The locking lug of the barrel is painted later for identification here. As the bolt carrier moves to the rear, the cam track in its upper surface acts on the cam pin. In the initial movement, the bolt cam pin has free movement and is not acted upon by the cam track. This allows enough time for the bullet to leave the barrel and gas pressure to subside. The cam pin is then moved by the cam track, making the bolt rotate until the locking lugs of the bolt are no longer in line with the barrel extension locking lugs. The firing pin is retracted from the bolt face away from the primer by the shoulder in the bolt carrier as the bolt and carrier separate. The bolt then moves rearward with the bolt carrier compressing the action spring and pushing the hammer down away from the firing pin. Now, Extraction will begin. As the bolt and carrier continue to the rear, the head of the bolt cam pin rides in the upper receiver guide channel to prevent the bolt from rotating during recoil or counter recoil. The extractor grips the case and pulls it from the chamber. Extraction ends when the front of the cartridge case clears the chamber. The next step is ejection. The ejector and spring have been compressed and have been applying pressure on the base of the cartridge case since chambering. When the case clears the side of the ejection port, the ejector and spring force the base of the case to pivot about the extractor, 
and out of the ejection port. Test lab footage in high-speed photography shows it like this. The bolt continues rearward, striking the buffer head, which in turn strikes the end of the barrel extension, and this stops the rearward movement of the bolt carrier group. The final step, cocking, has actually begun during unlocking. After firing the first round, while the trigger is still depressed, the hammer is forced down into the lower receiver where the lower hammer hook engages the hook on the disconnector. After the bolt returns to the forward position, finger pressure is released from the trigger. The hook of the disconnector disengages from the lower hammer hook, allowing the hammer to move forward, enabling the front of the trigger to engage the hammer. To fire another round, the trigger must again be squeezed, allowing the nose of the trigger to move downward out of the cocking notch, releasing the hammer. Firing and cocking with the selector lever set in the automatic position is slightly different. As the selector is rotated to the automatic position, the center cam of the selector moves and holds the rear end of the disconnector down while the trigger is raised during firing. The same operation seen from the top rear of the weapon, we can see the selector lever allowing the automatic sear spring to rotate the lower arm of the automatic sear forward into the notch of the selector lever, permitting the top of the automatic sear to move rearward. After the first round has been fired, the bolt carrier forces the hammer down and to the rear. The automatic sear spring rotates on the automatic sear and the center cam of the selector lever prevents the disconnector from engaging the hammer. Notice the space between the disconnector and the hammer hook. The upper hammer hook then engages the automatic sear. When the bolt and carrier return forward, the bolt picks up another round chambers, locks, and after locking, the bolt carrier strikes the automatic sear which pivots on a pin and allows the hammer to rotate forward, firing the weapon. This cycle will repeat as long as the trigger is squeezed and ammunition is in the magazine. When the trigger is released, Nothing really changes. It's the same sequence. Repeating this action, the bolt carrier strikes the automatic sear, releasing the hammer, which allows it to rotate forward until, as you can see, the front of the trigger engages the cocking notch of the hammer. To summarize the cycle of functioning, there are eight steps. In feeding, a loaded magazine is in the magazine well. The magazine spring and follower place around in the path of the bolt. Chambering occurs when the bolt places around in the chamber. Locking is when the bolt rotates and locks itself to the locking lugs of the barrel. In firing, the trigger is squeezed, allowing the hammer to rotate forward, striking the firing pin.
Unlocking occurs when gas from the burning powder enters the gas cylinder and pushes the bolt carrier back, rotating the bolt cam pin, turning the locking lugs, and unlocking the bolt. As the bolt moves rearward, the round is extracted, and when the front of the cartridge clears the opening in the receiver, ejection occurs. There are two types of cocking. First, semi-automatic. In semi, the disconnector catches the hammer after each round, and as the trigger is released, the disconnector releases the hammer and the trigger catches it. On automatic, the disconnector is held away from the hammer and the automatic sear catches it when the bolt carrier comes forward. It trips the automatic sear and releases the hammer. Now that you have an understanding of how the weapon functions, let's look at the immediate action if your rifle malfunctions. Tap the magazine to make sure it is seated properly. Pull the charging handle all the way back. Watch for ejection of a hole or an empty case. If the cartridge case is ejected, release the charging handle. But do not ride it forward. Be sure the bolt is fully forward by pushing forward on the forward assist assembly. Now squeeze the trigger, and it should work unless you have faulty ammunition or a faulty firing mechanism. Remember, for immediate action, tap, pull, release, push, and squeeze the trigger, and the weapon should fire.